Razor, Jim Sharp. Why Razor? Because he was so sharp. Come on, Razor! <laughs> Come on, Razor! One of the greatest of all time. You know, before the PBR was ever PBR, you know, he won a couple world titles. I think he rode 30 some straight bowls at the NFR. Good bowl ride. 1986 was his rookie year through 1992. In that six year period, nobody in the history of bull riding has made the whistle more times than Jim Sharp did. Nobody, not even close. Jim Sharp, two times a world champion in the PRCA, won the average at the NFR three different times. You know, we talk about riding all 10 bulls. Well, if you ride all 10, chances are you're going to win. He is going to do it. He has done it. He has done it. Rodeo that, That's something that had never been done in history, and, and many people believe that it would never get accomplished. This young man three years ago said he'd do it. I believe Jim Sharp was probably the greatest bull rider I've ever seen. And I think that he didn't win as many world championships as he could have, just because he almost made it look too easy. He's in total control. Yeah, Jim's riding style, I'd call it graceful. He was always in position. He was always in control. It just looked smoother than a lot of other guys. He made it look so easy, sometimes it would take away from the bull's score. And it would even fool us guys that traveled with him sometimes. You know, I'd see him on a bull, and I'd have a bull, the same bull a month later, and bull would jump out of there and about jerk my arm off and slam my ear in the ground, and I'd go, well, what? That ain't how he looked with Jim. You know, Jim Sharp had a lot of big scores, but I remember a ride on Promised Land in Fort Worth, and it was just poetic. Jim Sharp on the Promised Land. There are many greats, but when somebody asks me who was the greatest that I've ever seen, he's the first one that, that comes to my mind. I mean, to watch a guy like him ride a rank bull is what all of us aspired to be like. I think, I think he rode better than anybody. Better than anybody, better than Tuff, better than uh, Justin McBride, better than Adrian Morales, better than anybody. There was a handful of things that he knew he was gonna do every single time, no matter what bull he got on. And he didn't complicate that. He trusted it, and he rode every kind of bull that there was and made it look like anybody could do it and nobody could do it. When Jim was at his best, I've never seen anybody that good. There's never been a guy that I watched and was more in awe of. It's like he would impress me every day. You know, and when you would think, man, the guy just can't get any better than that, then, the you know, the next day he would. Tough Hedeman, one of the founding fathers of the PBR. Gonna do what it takes to get one road. Tough, oh, look at that move. He's got him now. There's, there's no back off out of Tough Hedeman. Tough was a guy, he was pigeon-toed, he stumbled everywhere he went, he wasn't very coordinated. He, you know, you wouldn't even really consider him a great athlete, but he was tough as hell, both physically and mentally. And whenever you ran in the rankest of the ranked bulls, I never bet against him. Don't tell him it can't be done because they'll pull it all that tighter and show you that it can be done. Yeah. He was the best when he won his first world championship in the PRCA. He was the best when he won his PBR championship. And when he went down for the last time and had to retire, he was the number one bull rider in the PBR and the number one bull rider in the PRCA at the same time. Ham it up, tough. You're looking so good. Tough Edelman on Bodacious. Right there, that's the bull. He is a ton of fun. The man on his back. <laughs> Edelman. Bodacious, you know, the bull that ended up busting his face. But when they hit, I can still remember the sound of it. Like somebody hit a baseball bat on a watermelon. It was pretty eye-opening to go, wow, this is who I think is the best guy there is. And he just got it handed to him and about got his entire head knocked off. It's still the worst one I've ever seen that they walked away from. He's tough. He's real tough. The thing a guy better remember, too, is it never knocked him out. That's how tough tough is. He's one of the toughest guys. His nickname was, was perfect. He got that nickname because when he was a little boy, a man that he was with shut the door and he didn't realize Tuff's hand was in the door and he never cried. And that man said, well, you're a tough nut, ain't you? And that's kind of where the, you know, that's where the nickname came from. Went down, hit hard, get up tough. You don't care what you think. You don't care about much of anything. He's just a dirty, rotten, tough cowboy. He's a guy that never fell off. 
it truly felt to me like he could ride anything at any time. Tuff Hiedemann, to me, is, if not the greatest, one of the greatest bull riders of all time. You know, as a kid growing up, Tuff Hiedemann was one of those guys that, that you idolized if you wanted to be a bull rider. He willed it to happen every single time. He just willed himself back on that ball. There was a lot of times that you just got to sit back and go, whoa, watch this. You know, and he'd just ride one, pull a foot, and do a little kick in him. I think when it comes to looking at ranked bull riders, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody any better than Tough. He was, to me, the king of the hill. You know, the guy that represents bull riding, the guy that represents professionalism, dedication. He'll go down as one of the greatest of all time. Well, well, well. Talk about just a neck ride. You know, I question myself, you know, who do you think was the best rider ever? Many, many times. And I don't know why Justin's always there. This is why he's the defending champ, Justin McBride. He's going to be your winner. He's probably the top of my list. I know there's guys that's won more world titles, but the way he done it and the mindset he took into every one of them was like really nothing I, I've ever seen before or after. That's away from Justin's hand. He doesn't care which way it spins. He rides bulls. Justin just wins. He was a bull rider, he won gold buckles. There's something about Justin McBride, the way he approached the sport, the way he won his world titles, always wanting to get on the best bulls, willing to hang off the side to win a gold buckle. I mean, Jess Locke would put McBride on his birthday cake when he was four. Justin McBride has made a career out of doing what seems the impossible. Being one of the greatest riders of all time, the greatest rider of all time in my opinion, I would introduce him as the GOAT myself. You can put him at the top. He rode everything. He'd get on the rankest bulls and make them look silly. You know, there was no, no bull that you knew that he was out, outdone on. I mean, he rode this bull like he was a day off because he rides so in control. He was one of the toughest guys that I ever watched get on the back of the bull. And his mental attitude every single time he got on the back of a bull was, I want to win. He keeps it so simple and so pure that's what the sport is meant to be. Here's McBride going the distance. McBride has a list of big moments in his career, but right off the top of my head is, of course, when he rode camo in 2005, hanging off the side. For the world title, McBride to the right on camo. As a seat, hanging off the side. Holy cow, what an effort. You could not have gotten him off that bowl for another six or seven rounds you know, before he touched the ground because he wanted to win. He was not hanging. He was riding. That's the difference. Justin was upside down, and he's still looking at the bull. He was still riding that bull. That's what makes it even cooler to me. He didn't have to hang under that bull to have that million dollars. He could have just, you know, jumped right off when he got in a bad position, but that's that's cowboy shit when you hang under a bull like that. Maybe the greatest effort to hang on Justin McBride rode Voodoo Child in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Mike White was like, hey, I want Troubadour. You know, leave me Troubadour. And McBride's like, you know, okay, whatever, I'll take this one. He's the only guy to ride this bull so far. It's a, a great ride. And he said he drove home that night from Tulsa. And riding Voodoo Child just didn't really mean that much to him. That's when Justin knew that it was time to retire. There's not a lot of guys that can say that they actually went out at the very top of their game. And Justin did. This is a true bull rider, old mentality. And that, that's how Justin rode. You know, he rode today. Today, today is the most important day. He's not a guy that is boastful or prideful. He's just a guy that's a freaking winner. To me, Justin McBride, he's, he's at the top of the 30.